Welcome everybody, Mr. Johnson here with you. This is the first video of three on titrations. And titrations are a technique that is used in chemistry to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. I'm gonna run you through some of the materials I have in front of me. Uh, and with this camera angle, either I'm gonna be ducking down or my head is gonna be out of view and we're just gonna to have to be okay with that. So I've got some chemicals here. I've got um, ammonia water, also known as ammonium hydroxide. It's a base, it's a strong base. It has hydroxide as its anion. I've got sulfuric acid here. This is a strong acid, um, very toxic, very corrosive, and it's um, of a high concentration, so we gotta be careful with that. This is phenolphthalein, which is an indicator. It's a pH indicator that indicates uh, when the pH of a solution is either basic or acidic, and I'll talk about how it works in a moment. I already have it dissolved in some water here. This is an Erl Erlenmeyer flask, of course. This is my waste beaker here. This fancy device is a burette, which is used typically for titrations or to dispense very accurate volumes of solutions. Got a funnel on the top, which you can't see for me to fill from. And then I've also got a graduated cylinder here that has been pre-filled with the sulfuric acid. All right, so let's get started. Um, first thing that I do when I prepare for a titration is rinse the burette well with distilled water. That's already happened. So the burette has been rinsed well with distilled water. The second thing to do is prepare to prepare an accurate volume of what is called the analyte. There's two solutions we use, the analyte and the titrant. The analyte is the solution that goes underneath the burette, and that is the solution whose concentration is unknown. In this case, the analyte is going to be sulfuric acid whose concentration is unknown. But I did pre-measure this so that I know its volume very accurately. I got down here at eye level, put about 20 milliliters in, then I used a pipette to add as many drops as it took to get to 20.0 milliliters. So I've got 20.0 milliliters of, of sulfuric acid that I'm going to pour into my Erlenmeyer flask, not into my waste beaker, because I tend to want to titrate into Erlenmeyer flasks, a splash glass. So that's the value you're going to want to write down is the 20.0 milliliters of sulfuric acid. The next thing I'm going to do is fill the burette with the titrant, the solution whose concentration is known. And in this case, that's the ammonium hydroxide, and the concentration is known to be 0 0.20 molar. That's something you should write down as well. So I'm going to fill it with the funnel. I've got my stopcock closed. It's perpendicular to the burette, so it won't spill out. I do have my waste beaker underneath instead of my Erlenmeyer flask in case a little bit spills out. And I fill it nearly to the top. The numbers on a burette read down. There's a zero at the top and a 50 at the bottom because it's meant to tell you how much of a solution has been dispensed. And as the volume drops, the numbers increase. Again, a burette's numbers read down. A burette is also incremented to the tenth of a milliliter. And because we're expected to be able to estimate one place, place past that, we're able to get volume to the nearest hundredth of a milliliter. It's a very precise device. I want to open the stopcock now to fill the tip with the ammonium hydroxide so that when I'm ready to titrate, when I open the stopcock again, the solution will start coming out immediately as opposed to some air. So I've filled my tip with the titrant with the ammonium hydroxide, and I'm now close to ready to titrate. We'll learn more later how pH indicators work, um, but I'll tell you, first of all, that acids, sulfuric acid, have very low pHs, whereas bases, ammonium hydroxide, have high pHs. Uh, neutral pH is 7. Acids have a pH less than 7. Bases have a pH greater than 7. Indicators are one color in an acidic environment and are a different color in a basic environment. I'm using phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is colorless when it's in the presence of an acid, and it turns pink when it's in the presence of a base. And it turns color at about a pH of 7. It turns color at the point at which the solution is neutral. And in an acid-base titration, when the solution is neutral, when the indicator has changed color, that's when the acid and base have neutralized each other and when you're at what, what is called the end point or the equivalence point. And that's when moles of acid equal moles of base in terms of their coefficient or their stoichiometric ratio. So I'm now going to add a few drops of the phenolphthalein to my analyte, my sulfuric acid solution. Notice it's remaining colorless because it's in the presence of an acid. And that is going to allow me to, as I titrate, know when I've reached this equivalence point, this point at which Moles of acid equals moles of base, and that's the end point of my titration. The next thing I do is get an initial volume of my titrant from my burette. 
and the numbers read down, it's below zero and above one. It's looking like it's 0 0.74. 0 0.74 milliliters is the initial volume you want to record. All right, I'm ready to start titrating. So first I'm going to put the stop cock wide open. I know I've got a ways to go until I reach my equivalence point or endpoint. You maybe wouldn't, but I've done the math to know that. Um, and the solution is going to remain colorless at first because there's still an excess of acid in this solution. I haven't added enough base for the neutralization to have happened. Keep swirling, keep swirling. And there will be a point soon where it starts to get pink near the spot where I'm adding the base. And that's because in that small little region, until the swirling has been done adequately, there is an excess of, of base in that little region. I don't know if you saw, it got pink for just a bit, and as I swirled, the pink started to go away. So I'm getting close. At this point, I now want to start to add just a little bit of time, just a drop at a time, so that ideally I reach my equivalence or endpoint through the addition of just a single drop. That way I get a very accurate volume of the amount of titrant that I've added. And I don't know if you all can see, but I'm going to pull this thing out. That solution is now fairly pink. I slightly overshot the endpoint. I added maybe just an extra half a spurt beyond what I should have to have reached there, but I'm okay with that. I'm now going to give you my final volume reading. And I read down, and it's 28.12. So that's going to be the final volume of the titration. All right, that's it for our first video. Now you're going to answer some questions about titrations in general and do some calculations to determine what the concentration was of the ammonium hydroxide based on the data that I just gathered for you. See you in the second video.